Good morning, my beautiful people. Yeah, man. Welcome to another vlog. Vlog number two. This morning, I continue to drink my garlic and lemon tea to maintain that blood pressure. A very good remedy, guys. I'm actually feeling much better since I start having this tea in the mornings. All right, so I'm going to do a rundown of this morning's news on the Observer, the Gleaner, and Loop News. And, I'm, and this morning, I'm going to start out with the Gleaner. What's on the Gleaner this morning? The headlines. Buju's son forgives him. I mean, you guys may have seen some things in the um, news lately about Buju Bantan's son. Uh, Marcus Myrie, you know, really cuss him out on social media, Instagram, and so on. Uh, and I tell you, this social media thing really causing havoc in people's lives. There was no need to really put that out there, in my view. I think this was a family thing, and they needed to deal with it. Right? It's a father and son issues, and father and son always a fall out, you know. Because, trust me, when my father was alive... We have a couple falling out. <laughs> but you know, you deal with it like family. That's how it should be dealt with. Second, on the list, fake recruitment ad causes thousands to descend on JDF. Okay, I think this has to do with some fake ad. And this is, you know, as I said before, social media. Social media caused this because these recruits apparently saw this ad, fake ad out there and descended on JDF thinking that they were recruiting more than 2,000 uh, young people were there to apply to become soldiers. Third on the news in, on the Gleaner is that transport minister warns against using snow tires. <laughs> using snow tires? Why would people be using snow tires in Jamaica? Funny. I tell you, Jamaicans are easy, you know. People! Snow tires are not made to use in tropical climates. Um, they are they are made to use in in places where you have snow. That's why them call them snow tires. All right, <laughs> boy, Jamaicans not easy. Flash floods and this is on the international scene. You know, flash floods, earthquake in Indonesia kill over eighty. Ah, feeling very bad about them. Look at something on me here about them. You know, only political disaster going on in the world, you know, people. Yeah, U.S. Supreme Court to consider whether Lee Boyd Malvo deserved, uh, deserves new sentencing. Mm. So, I don't know how many of you guys remember Lee Boyd Malvo, that sniper, with that sniper shooting some years ago, terrorized people in the U.S., um, I let me read that story of, you know. The Washington Post is reporting that U.S. Supreme Court today indicated that it will consider whether Leroy Malvo, the teenage half of the Beltway snipers who terrorized the Washington region 16 years ago, may challenge his sentence of life in prison. Malvo, 34, was a 17-year-old when he and John Allen Mohammed committed what Virginia officials called one of the most notorious things of terrorist acts in modern American history. Between September 5th and October 22nd, 2002, Muhammad and Malvo killed 10 people and wounded others in sniper attacks in Virginia, Maryland, and the District of Columbia. Muhammad was executed in 2009, but Malvo received sentences of life in Virginia and Maryland. The Supreme Court actions uh, announced Monday involve the Virginia sentences and will be heard in the term that starts in October. After a 2003 trial in which Malvo was convicted of shooting FBI analyst Linda Franklin outside a Fairfax County home, the pot store, a jury decided against the death penalty. Um, Alright, tell me something you guys. Do you think that... He deserves a new sentencing, one that does not involve life. 
I don't know. I mean, they, these guys take a lot of lives. And at 17 years old, yes, you know, he was young. But I think he was a sensible boy, intelligent enough to know what he was doing. So, uh, this is my personal opinion. No, uh, you know, you can disagree. But I don't think him should re receive a new sentence. In me, no, no, me not think so. I do not think so. Yeah, guys. So that is what's on the Gleaner. Let us see what's on the Observer this morning, guys. I hope you're not having a good morning. I hope that you guys will have a good day at work today. I have school, and I have a presentation. Um, for one of my classes. Alright, so on the Observer. New Zealand leader vows to absolutely deny Musk gunman a platform. Of course, you know, give them criminal then a platform and put them before the court and if them find them guilty, you know, lock him up for life. Yeah, man, lock him up for life. Double fatal accident in Trelawney. People, Jamaican people, we need our drivers to take time on the road, you know. Take no time on the road. Right? That's another big problem at Jamaica. The man them feel like say a be a racetrack we have at Jamaica. You know, see your Jamaica roads narrow. Listen, me they're far in a drive now and the road them so big and pretty and nice. Right? And people still are meeting accident up here. And look how Jamaican roads them narrow. And you guys are still speeding and doing all kind of foolishness on the road. No take on the time, man. Take on the time on the road. Five cars stolen outside Bujabantan concert. We have Uli Pati for Jamaica. No? <laughs> Be sorry if you said. We have some good people at Jamaica, but we have Uli Pati too. Uli Pati there at Jamaica. Motorcyclists die in bizarre crash. Yeah, we we continue to have problems with, with um, motorcycle crashes or uh, you know accidents on the road. Very bad. Man fined fifty thousand dollars for illegal dumping. Yeah, man, good. We need to keep Jamaica clean. As a matter of fact, that they need to step up the fine. We could keep the country clean, man. All right, there's nothing much on the Observer this morning. I know it's kind of early, so some stories may then up post some story. Let me go to Loop News now. Loop News. What's on Loop News? The latest. On Loop News this morning. Sterling Gospel Awards team responds to Wayne Marshall fiasco. Oh, let me look on that. Uh, let me read this one. There can be no doubt about it, Wayne Marshall's glory to God has hit the right note with secular and religious persons around the war and around the globe. But despite his sterling effort, the artist was excluded from nomination for an award at the Sterling Gospel Awards, which was held recently at the Knutsford Court Hotel in St. Andrew. The snub by the Sterling Awards team has drawn sharp criticism from some sectors of society while others who align themselves with Christian principles seem to agree that Marshall's song does not qualify for such an award as he has consistently refused to make it clear whether or not he has turned his life over to Christ. I do not understand. Why is it important for him to reveal whether or not he has turned over his life to, to God. If it's a good song, it's a good song. And it should not be judged based on whether or not he has turned his life over to Christ. That is his business, his relationship with God. So, I mean, why should the man be judged based on that? It's a very poor reason for not um, giving, him, you know, giving him a nomination. It's a good song. A uh, very nice song and a lot of people love the song. Me like the song too, you know what I mean? So, me no know. Me no know people. You know, the thing is that we have some fanatics out there who believe, say, you know, you, you, you have to go in a church and jump up and shout hallelujah and all of that to be a Christian. Right? You can be a Christian in your own home. And I know some people are going to say, what Mr. Watson said because he grew up in a church. Well, you know what happened? I mean, I read the Bible for myself 
and I know God for myself. And I know that it is not our place to judge whether somebody has a good relationship with God or not. The man sing a lovely song about God and I think that if him deserve to be nominated, nominate him. Him not to be a Christian to be nominated. Or right, the second story is similar to what we have seen on the Gleaner. A fake interview invite lures thousands of JDF aspirants to Up Park Camp. The third new student entrepreneurs compete to defend JA's IBMC Global Championship. Yeah, guys. So that's the rundown of the news this morning. Okay, on Loot News, it just refresh. Man arrested, gun seized in Denham Town operation. Yeah, man, we need to take the gun them off the streets. The legal gun them. We need to take the legal gun them off the street. All right, so that's it for on, on Loot News. Not a whole lot going on this morning, and we're glad for that. You know, but people, yeah, man, um, this morning, I have a very early class. I have a presentation. So as per usual, I will keep you posted, all right? Peace and love. Yeah, my peeps, I'm on my way from school. Um, I couldn't really bring my camera inside to show you what's happening. So you don't know, I couldn't record anything, you know what I mean? But um, I want to say something though about a comment, uh, uh, somebody comment on my video and said, boy, yo, we don't want to see what you're doing. You think you're a Seinfeld? You have to talk about your other vlogs. Basically, that's what the person was saying. Not word for word. I mean, listen to me, people. These vlogs are for those persons who have always been there for me and those persons who are currently joining the family who like the content. So, I mean, I'm not forcing anyone to watch my videos. And YouTube is a free place. You can watch, you can decide to watch a video and you can decide not to watch a video. Right? So, I will never force anyone to watch my videos now if you feel the need to watch my video and make a, a comment such as that just understand that I am probably going to delete the comment or I'm going to respond a little harshly because I me mean, not really like the negativity anyway with that said another viewer commented and said boy Mr. Watson may always see you now lock up um, scammers we scam foreign people but me never hear so now lock up no scam of a scam Jamaican. That is that is true. Cause we know we know really do a lot of reporting of that. But I can tell you we have arrested a lot of people in Jamaica who scam Jamaicans. Because yeah, Jamaicans get scammed too no. We know say a lot of Jamaicans feel like say them scam proof. But a whole heap of Jamaicans get scammed. We see it all the time. I'm going to share a, a, a case with you now. This pastor called me one time, right? Another police from a, another division gave him my number because they here said, me are the, the man who deal with scamming and lots of scamming, you know? So they gave him my number. He called and he said, boy, Mr. Watson, I'm in some problems. You know, say somebody scammed me out of 500 US dollars. He said, well, me get a call from my phone. The person said, I them and my nephew calling from the US and they must send down three barrels. But them run short on some funds, they run short on some money to send down the barrels. So they ask me to just send out 500 US come game. I don't know if this pastor never do him checks, if he never realized, say, um, I know his nephew, I don't know if him, what, what, you know, probably the person sound like his nephew. Um, apparently the person tell him some things where him kind of familiar with so him somehow he was convinced by this person that time nephew him a talk to so him not do much investigation him just take the money and send off send off to the place where the, where the, where the person asked him to send it off to days gone by him no hear nothing a week go by him no hear nothing so him decides uh, he might try call back the number no response from the number so he decided to call his nephew's mother that would be his sister to ask about what's happening so when he called her and asked her about the barrel that 
her son supposed to send that is his nephew she was like no no john what are you talking about no man they don't know said they're all um no no they in the states no man he mean at the army so he's the germany right now so it was like really no man but Daryl called me and tell me say I send down three barrels and if he send off some money. She said no one Daryl that. Right? So obviously when him do him checks and checks and checks and, and balances him realize say a scamming get scammed. Jamaican me I tell you about. Scammed. Yeah man. So a lot of Jamaicans do get scammed also. Another case I remember was with a woman who came to the fraud squad office. That time I was uh, managing Era One fraud squad for about three months. I was there. And a woman came to the office, come report that she was scammed by a man who she thought was her boyfriend. She met this man on Facebook. They've never met in a person, but they have been talking for a while. And this man told her that he was in the army. Right, and how much house him own, and how much car him own, and him have money and them something. And she believed. Him tell her one day, say, I'll send her, he's going to send her some things. Right? I'm going to ship her off a barrel. She was so excited. He said that she, him even tell her, say, You don't have to worry about a thing, baby. I'm going to clear the barrel and everything for you. All you have to do is go and pick up. Anyway, she believed it. I'll, I'll send her a picture of the receipt, the invoice for the courier service we use for ship off the barrel and everything like that. Yeah, man, and she believe you, she buy into it. A Jamaican, may I tell you about, right in a Jamaica. A few days after, I don't remember if it's, a, if it's three or four days after or a week after, she get a call say there was something for her to pick up what she need. For send up, pay some money for pick it up, because some of the money where the man did pay, where the person pay for send off the barrel, never clear everything. So she need to send off, send them some more money, and them could ask them ask her for send it through Western Union, a hundred and fifty dollars. So she get excited and send off the hundred and fifty dollars. Never hear back from the man again. We know it sounds simple, it sounds stupid, it sounds trivial, like I say, how, but it happened. The scammers know how to get people to do things. They have that kind of skill there. They know how to empathize and sympathize and convince people. They are very cunning. So a lot of Jamaicans get scammed too. Right? So I want to tell that viewer that don't worry yourself man. You have the fraud squad who deal with a whole heap of fraud where Jamaicans have been defrauded and arrest a whole heap of people for defraud Jamaicans. So, you know, it's not only about arresting persons for defrauding foreign people. We arrest people for defraud Jamaicans too. You understand me, I say? Yeah, man. So, guys, I'm actually going to be stopping at the barber. Getting a little shape up with the beard. You know, some people are telling me I look like Taliban. Like, I me, uh, me come from the Middle East. So I'm going to give it a nice shape up and thing so I can look good again. Alright people, so I'm keeping it posted. You see me? Alright my peeps, I just got to the barber. Going on the inside now. I'm going to let them shave up my beard and everything, alright? Yeah man. So see you in a little while.
like a Taliban. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it from me for today. You know, as per usual, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The Noble Cop. Um, remember to like this video and subscribe. Support the channel, man. Yeah, man, support the thing, right? The more subscribers I have, I mean, obviously, you guys are supposed to know this by now, the better it is for me, right? Um, also, guys, you can support me through Patreon, um, you know, in the description below. You can just click on that Patreon link or you can support me through um, PayPal, right? Whichever. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, you don't have to, but if you feel a drive to, to support me because you like my content and all of that, you can do that. All right, guys, until next time, my love or no bad, bad. Walk good. Alright.